Welcome to Election Night in America 2022 and our coverage of the 2022 Senate elections, which will determine whether or not Joe Biden will be able to get his legislation passed in the second half of his presidential term. Currently, the upper chamber is split 50-50, but Democrats have control because they hold the vice presidency. However, this does mean that Republicans need to just gain one seat in order to retake power in the Senate. And we will keep you guys updated throughout the night on the 34 Senate races as the Democrats attempt to defend their majority. It is now 7 p.m. here on the East Coast, and we have our first poll closings for the 2022 Senate elections, with polls closing in the states of Georgia, Indiana, Kentucky, South Carolina, and Vermont. In the state of Georgia, Herschel Walker is the projected winner. He will defeat Raphael Warnock, the, Rep the Democratic incumbent, who won his first two-year term just in 2020 after winning the Georgia Senate special election. But Herschel Walker will go on to serve alongside John Ossoff as the junior senator from the state of Georgia. And looking at the results here, Herschel Walker has won a majority of the vote, which is enough for him to avoid that runoff race. So Warnock has been defeated, and Raphael Warnock will not go on to serve a full six-year term in the U.S. Senate. This is the first flip of the night in favor of the Republican Party. In the state of Indiana, Todd Young is the projected winner. He will win his first bid for re-election, and this is a hold for the Republican Party. As well as that, in the state of Kentucky, Rand Paul will successfully win a third full six-year term in the U.S. Senate. And in the state of South Carolina, Tim Scott is the projected winner and will win his second full six-year term in the U.S. Senate. And finally, in the state of Vermont, Peter Welch will replace Patrick Leahy, the longtime Democratic senator from the state of Vermont. Patrick Leahy will be retiring after this term in January of next year, and he will be replaced by longtime representative Peter Welch, who will actually go on to become only the second Democratic senator from the state in the state's history. So Peter Welch, the projected winner in the state of Vermont. And after our first poll closings of the night, the GOP with 34 seats with that flip in the state of Georgia and the Democrats at 37. And it is now 7.30 p.m. here on the East Coast, and we have two major states in which we're seeing the polls close in, and these are the states of North Carolina and Ohio. In the state of North Carolina, Ted Budd is the projected winner. He will defeat Sherry Beasley in a very contested race in the state of North Carolina. Ted Budd, this will be his first six-year term in the U.S. Senate. This is an open race as Richard Burr, the Republican incumbent, decided to retire after this term. So Ted Budd winning a majority of the vote against Sherry Beasley, who wins just less than 46%. Ted Budd at 50.7. So this is another major race that the Republican have won, they have held on to their seat in the state of North Carolina. As well as that, in the state of Ohio, this one is not as close, but Josh Mandel will go on to defeat Tim Ryan in the Ohio Senate race, as Josh Mandel will win 51.1% of the vote to Tim Ryan's 46.3%. So Tim Ryan will no longer be serving in Congress, as he chose not to run for re-election in his House seat. So Josh Mandel will win his first six-year term in the United States Senate, representing the state of Ohio. And this puts the GOP up at 36 seats, and the Democrats remain at 37 at, after the second poll closings of the night. And it is now 8 p.m. here on the East Coast, and we have our largest poll closing of the night, with polls closing in the states of Alabama, Connecticut, Florida, Illinois, Maryland, Missouri, New Hampshire, Oklahoma, and Pennsylvania. In the state of Alabama, Mo Brooks is the projected winner. He will go on to replace Richard Shelby, the retiring Republican incumbent, and this being a hold for the GOP. In the state of Connecticut, Richard Blumenthal will win his re-election to another six-year term in the United States Senate. On top of that, in the state of Vermont, we have a major win for Marco Rubio as he wins his third term representing the state of Florida. In the Sunshine State, Marco Rubio has garnered almost 53% of the vote, defeating Val Demings by almost 10%. This is a big margin for the state of Florida, which typically sees its races be very close. But in 2022, here in the state of Florida, Marco Rubio is the projected winner to another six-year term in Congress. In the state of Illinois, Tammy Duckworth will defeat Bill Brady to win his, her second term in the U.S. Senate, representing the state of Illinois. As well as that, Chris Van Hollen will also win his re-election as the Democratic incumbent from the state of Maryland. 
In the state of Missouri, Eric Greens, the former governor who resigned in disgrace in 2017, Eric Greens will go on to win his first six-year term in Congress, defeating Lucas Kuntz. So after his resignation almost five years ago, Eric Greens, with 51% of the vote, will defeat Lucas Kuntz in the state of Missouri. Kuntz, for a Democrat, did pretty well for a Democrat in the state of Missouri at this point in time, but Eric Greens will still end up on top, winning his first six-year term in the United States. Senate. In the state of New Hampshire, Maggie Hassan will defeat Chuck Morse to win her second term in the United States Senate after her first in 2016. Of course, that was a very close race against Republican incumbent Kelly Yacht at the time, Maggie Hassan winning the closest race in 2016, but now in 2022, she will have a much more of a comfortable margin against Chuck Morse in the race in New Hampshire. In the state of Oklahoma, James Lankford is the projected winner. He will defeat Bevin Rogers and win his second term representing the state of Oklahoma alongside Jim Inhofe. And in Pennsylvania, this is a major projection that we have to make here. Mehmet Oz will defeat John Fetterman and hold on to the state of Pennsylvania for the Republican Party. Mehmet Oz, the uh, TV personality, will defeat the Lieutenant Governor of the state of Pennsylvania and win his first six-year term in the United States Senate winning by less than one percentage point against John Fetterman, but Mehmet Oz has been elected the newest senator from the state of Pennsylvania and will serve alongside Bob Casey. And after our largest poll closing of the night, both the Democrats and the Republicans hold 41 seats apiece, with the Republicans still having that major win in the state of Georgia and holding on to Pennsylvania, which was one of their most vulnerable seats. It is now 8.30 p.m. here on the East Coast, and we have just one poll closing in the state of Arkansas. And in the state of Arkansas, John Boozman will win re-election. This is not surprising at all in the very deep red state of Arkansas. John Boozman will hold on to the state of Arkansas for the Republican Party. And this, of course, puts the GOP up at 42 seats, and the Democrats remain at 41 after our 8.30 poll closing in Arkansas. And it's now 9 in the evening here on the East Coast, and we have our second largest poll closing of the night, with polls closing in eight of these Senate races. These Senate races being Arizona, Colorado, Kansas, Louisiana, New York, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Wisconsin. In the state of Arizona, we have a major projection to make here in favor of the Democratic Party as Mark Kelly holds on to a Senate seat in Arizona, defeating Mark Bronovich. First elected in 2020, defeating Martha McSally in that special election in 2020, Mark Kelly now has won his first full six-year term representing the state of Arizona with a margin of less than 2%. In the state of Colorado, Michael Bennett will also win his re-election, holding onto the seat for a third time now for the Democratic Party. Michael Bennett will defeat Eli Bremer. Of course, this race is a lot closer than what we saw from in 2016, Michael Bennett winning by just over 3% in the state of Colorado. In the state of Kansas, Jerry Moran is the projected winner as he defeats Mark Holland to hold on to the state of Kansas for another six years for the Republican Party. And in the state of Louisiana, John Kennedy is the projected winner, holding on to this seat also for another six years for the Republican Party as John Kennedy defeats Gary Chambers in his re-election effort. And in the state of New York, the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, the leader of Senate Democrats currently, has won his re-election, no surprises here, in the very Democratic state of New York, as he will continue to serve alongside Kirsten Gillibrand. And Chuck Schumer, of course, whether or not he will remain the Senate Majority Leader is still up in the air, as Republicans currently have a very good chance at winning the Senate, with that major flip in Georgia so far. In the state of North Dakota, John Hoven is the projected winner. And down south in South Dakota, John Thune will win his re-election as well. These two Republican incumbents holding on to their seats for another six years. And finally, in the state of Wisconsin, this is a major projection that we have to make this time in favor of the GOP, with Ron Johnson defeating Mandela Barnes and winning a third term in the United States Senate. After promising that he would not run for a third term in 2022 in his 2016 campaign, Ron Johnson has changed his mind and will win a majority of the vote in his third race in the state of Wisconsin, winning 50.2% of the vote, defeating Mandela Barnes by over 100,000 votes. And after our 9 p.m. poll closings, the Democrats have 44 seats in the Senate currently, and the Republicans lead with 47 as they approach the magic number of 51. 
It is now 10 o'clock Eastern, and we have three poll closings in the states of Iowa, Nevada, and Utah. In the state of Iowa, Chuck Grassley is the projected winner as he defeats Abby Finkenauer and wins at his eighth term in the United States Senate. The longtime Republican senator who has been serving in Congress for 42 years now, Chuck Grassley will win his re-election in the state of Iowa and continue to serve the people of Iowa and holding on to the state for the Republican Party. In the state of Nevada, we have a key race here, and this race will also be the second flip of the night for the Republican Party as Adam Luxalt defeats Catherine Cortez Masto, the Democratic incumbent. So Adam Luxalt will win his first six-year term in the United States Senate by less than one percentage point as Adam Luxalt will defeat Catherine Cortez Masto, the Democratic incumbent who poured millions of dollars into a re-election campaign, but Catherine Cortez Masto has come up short and will no longer be serving in the Senate after just one term and being elected in 2016. And finally, in the state of Utah, Mike Lee will win his re-election and another six-year term in the U.S. Senate representing the state of Utah alongside Mitt Romney. And after our 10 p.m. poll closings, the Democrats are still at 44 seats and the GOP are now at 50. The Republican Party is now just one seat away from winning a majority in the United States Senate and taking back power for the first time since 2021. It is now 11 p.m. here on the East Coast, and we have our poll closings from the West Coast of the United States, with polls closing in the states of California, Hawaii, Idaho, Oregon, and Washington. In the state of California, Alex Padilla is the projected winner. This is not really a surprise, as he was appointed by Gavin Newsom to fill the vacancy left by Kamala Harris earlier last year. But Alex Padilla is the projected winner in the state of California, holding on to this seat for the Democratic Party. In the state of Hawaii, Brian Schatz will win his re-election, defeating Bob McDermott and holding on to the seat for another six years for the Democratic Party. And in the state of Idaho, we have now a major projection to make this race, although it's not too surprising Mike Crapo winning his re-election, but this is seat number 51 for the Republican Party, and this does mean that the GOP has won back control of the U.S. Senate. So with this win from Mike Crapo, we can now project that the Republican Party will win back the Senate and win the Senate for the first time since 2018. We're currently a projecting a net gain of two seats for the Republican Party with those two flips in Georgia and Nevada. So right now, we can project that the Republican Party will win the United States Senate in the 2022 midterm elections. In the state of Oregon, Ron Wyden is the projected winner. Even the Democrats will, of course, lose the Senate. Ron Wyden will win another six-year term representing the people of Oregon. As well as that, Patty Murray will also win her re-election in the state of Washington, holding on to this race for the Democratic Party once again. And of course, the GOP now has crossed that line. They are now at 51 seats with, of course, those two flips in Georgia and Nevada that we called earlier tonight. The Democratic Party is now up at 48 with only one race remaining in the state of Alaska. But nonetheless, the GOP has retaken control of the U.S. Senate after the new senators are sworn in earlier next year. And it's at 1 in the morning here on the East Coast, and we have our final poll closing of the night, with polls closing in the state of Alaska. And in the state of Alaska, we can project that Lisa Murkowski is the projected winner, as she will defeat the Trump-backed Kelly Shibaka. Both Republicans, but Lisa Murkowski, representing the more traditional Republican Party, will win her re-election to a fourth term in the United States Senate. Looking at the breakdown of the results here, this is the vote tally for the final ballot on the ranked choice voting ballot. So this is the first time in which Alaska will use ranked choice voting in a Senate race. And Lisa Murkowski has won 55.3% on that final ballot, defeating Kelly Shibaka. And Lisa Murkowski has gotten the majority that she needs and will be reelected to another six-year term representing the state of Alaska. And this, of course, is a major win for the traditional Republicans as they defeat Kelly Shibaka who was an America First candidate and one that received heavy support from the former president. And our final Senate map here shows 48 for the Democratic Party, 52 for the Republicans. We can project, of course, that the Republican Party has won back control of the U.S. Senate for the first time since 2018 with those two flips in Georgia and Nevada, of course, unseating Democratic incumbents Raphael Warnock and Catherine Cortez Masto. 
Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you like it down below if you enjoyed it. Comment down below which party you think will win in 2022, as well as whether or not you disagree with any of my calls. Subscribe to my channel if you have not, and I will see you guys in the next video.